Welcome to Kwon's Corner. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to make bibimbap, which is Korean mixed rice. To start, we're gonna start with the rice. I'll be using a Korean rice cooker, but if you don't have one, you can do this on a stove top and it will taste even better. You want a short grain white rice. We're going to put one and a half cups of water with one and a half cups of rice. Add one square of tashima and a pinch of salt. I'm slicing half of zucchini into one centimeter wide slices, kind of like tiny zucchini fries. Bibimbap is one of the most popular Korean food in the world. I might be wrong, but I think it is because when Michael Jackson visited Korea in late 1990, he said bibimbap was his favorite Korean food. Next, I'm gonna slice one whole carrot into the same 1cm wide fry shape as the zucchini. Bibimbap just means mixed fry. You can put any vegetables and any meat and still consider it as a bibimbap. Sometimes, bibimbap does not even have a meat. I'm following the very standard recipe. Next, I'm preparing spinach. You don't need to slice the spinach, just cut up the ends so that they don't get tangled later. This is not for standard bibimbap, but for my special bibimbap later, slice up a handful of perilla leaves and set it aside for later. Now, I've got some baby oyster mushrooms. You can use any mushrooms, but these are my favorite. You don't need to cut them, just tear them apart. Start with zucchini. Heat up some oil in a pan on medium-high heat. You want to use neutral oil to keep the flavor pure. Throw in your zucchini fries and sprinkle with salt. When the zucchini becomes fragrant and begins to crisp, place it on a plate to the side. To keep the flavors pure, wipe any leftover oil from the pan. Add new oil and toss in your carrots. Sprinkle salt onto the carrots, but make sure to use less than the zucchini. We want the carrot to retain their sweetness. We only want enough salt to bring out their flavors, not alter it. Place your carrots next to your zucchini. And now, let's boil the spinach. Fill up a pot and bring it to a boil. Add your spinach and toss it around for about 30 seconds. I never knew, but you can't put soy sauce in bibimbap except on brown colored food like bulgogi. If you put soy sauce, it might taste the same or better, but it will ruin the color of bibimbap. Bibimbap is all about the colors. Wash the spinach in ice water to make sure it doesn't get overcooked. Squeeze it lightly to make sure it doesn't get soggy. Then, mix it with one spoon of sesame oil one spoon. and a pinch of salt. Mix it well and plate it. And you gotta use the pan. Oh. Now bring a fresh pot of water to a boil and add your mushrooms. Cook the mushroom for 2-3 to three minutes, depending on the texture you prefer. Usually, I stir fry my mushrooms, but I asked my mom for this episode and she told me to boil it instead of pan frying it. I never did this before, but it was really yummy. After boiling, cool the mushrooms in ice water, squeeze them lightly, add 1 spoon of sesame oil, 1 pinch of salt, and mix them well. Plate them next to the spinach. Time for another fresh pot of water. This time, we're putting the bean sprout in the pot when the water is cold and bring them to a boil. You can see where multiple burners really help with this recipe. Once the water boils, wait 1 to 3 more minutes, then it's the same thing. 
ice water, squid, sesame oil, salt, mix. A long time ago, bibimbap was called paban, which means flour rice, because it has so many different ingredients, making it very colorful. Also, it is not as old of a food as I was expecting. It was created in the late 1800s. Time for my favorite part, mint. Heat up some fresh oil in a clean pan. Add two cloves of minced garlic and some ground beef. You don't want your beef chunky, so mix it around to loosen up. Add one spoon of sesame oil one spoon of soy sauce and one spoon of sugar oh! 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 Oh, shit. I messed it up okay since I messed it up I had to fix it so I added more salt and soy sauce to balance the extra sugar to be clear the correct recipe is one spoon of sesame oil one spoon of soy sauce one spoon of sugar and one spoon of water do what I say, not what I do. Still sweet, I gotta add some more soy sauce and salt. Stir it until the sauce has completely absorbed into the meat. Since I messed it up, I had too much sauce, but yours should look like a dry ground beef. All of our ingredients are done. Time for plating. Pack your white rice into a small bowl and flip it into the center of the big bowl. This is basically decorating. Put as many or as little veggie as you want, wherever you want. Following the tradition of bibimbap, I'm placing a lot of veggies all around my rice. Keeping each ingredient separate to make a beautiful rainbow of ingredients. Bibimbap recipes vary from city to city in Korea. So if you visit Korea and you love bibimbap, make sure to visit Jeonju. It is the most famous city for bibimbap and the most delicious in Korea. Next, I'm creating a divot in my rice and separating on egg yolk. There are many different ways to decorate a bowl of bibimbap. Usually, people place a fried egg on top, but I think that using an egg yolk is not only pretty, but adds a really great texture to the rice. Sprinkle some toasted sesame seeds on top, and your plating is all done. Korean eggs are much safer to eat raw than eggs in America, so maybe try an egg sunny side up instead. It will still be authentic and delicious. Now time for Kwon's Corner Secret Recipe. This bibimbap is simple and fast and show how versatile bibimbap can be. Get some pork belly and cut it up into 2 cm wide slices. Throw the meat into a pan on high heat and cook it in its fat until crisp on the edges. Do your rice fillet into a new bowl. And place your pork belly on top. Top the pork belly with perilla leaves. and add two more slices of pork belly on top for decoration. Time for our sauce. Get one spoon of red pepper paste or gochujang, a little less than a spoon of sesame oil and mix well. That's it. All of our food is ready. It's time to eat. Put a big heaping spoon of your sauce on top of your bibimbap and mix it very very well until the rice is uniformly red. Do the same for my secret pork belly bibimbap. After that, just enjoy it. Mm -hmm. 
If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like to support my channel. And if you want to see next week's video, hit subscribe. You can also ding the bell to get notification when I post. If you have any questions or there is a Korean recipe you want to learn how to make, leave me a comment down below and I will make sure to cover it in a future episode. I hope you enjoy it. See you next week. Annyeong!